Okay, folks, we have come back. I decided to lay off on an Elite Mode case. Plus our case 26, thanks to these three for helping me out. Giving up the ghost. Matthew, I fear the takeover of Stonewall Prison by Vittorio Capesci's Italian gang is just the tip of the iceberg as far as the mobsters' activities in Coyote Gorge are concerned. We need to delve deeper into Capesci's exploits in the region. And what better place to start than Devil's Ridge, one of the district's major trading posts. A murder so morbid, even the Capesci killer couldn't have slept. Straight post. I must say, I'm looking forward to the cheer of a bustling town. I just hope there won't be too many horses about. Oh, Bon Temps, I'd forgotten about your fear of horses. Sure, you don't want me to take over while you stay on the airship? Rose will protect you if, if any of the dastardly animals try to get on board. Are you saying a horse will be capable of boarding the airship? Oh, Maddie, I see you're just jesting with me, but yes, I really must overcome my equinophobia for the greater good of Concordia. Matthew, on we go to Devil's Ridge. Matthew, I was under the impression that Devil's Ridge was a bustling metropolis, but there isn't a soul in sight. All the windows are dark and dust-ridden. It's a veritable ghost town. Nicely spotted, Matthew. I too see a lone light emanating from one of the windows near the main square. Let's go take a look. With regard to pleading guilty to murder, uh, it's not a moment, but I guess somebody who feels really, um, for lack of a better term, guilty about what he did, uh, there's no other choice he could have uh, had. Prosecuting attorney Wayne Tashima says he had strong okay. evidence suggesting the two met up days before San Juan's death. And according to the victim's ex-husband, they knew each other well. Time six. They're just friends. That's all. They've been friends for years. He doesn't understand what could have gone so wrong. I just hope nobody has to go through something like this ever. Baker is set to serve life behind bars, but his plea oh boy. leaves open the possibility of parole. Lake Holokula, PITV Island News. Convicted murderer Stephen Kapobianco. Follow tie. Here we go. The possibility of parole. Mon Dieu! Matthew, you found a man hanging dead from a tree. Did he take his own life? You're right. The victim's hands have been tied, which means he can't have hanged himself. He has to have been murdered. This is certainly not the welcome I expected when we. Good lord! Will Wyoming's dead! Egad, you gave me a fright, good sir. Who might you be? Walter Abernathy at your service. I'm the town postman. Well, I'm glad to see there's at least one living soul in this town. Please wait here, Mr. Abernathy. Senior Trooper Matthew will want to have a word with you shortly. Matthew, if your victim's name is Will Wyoming, then this bolo tie must be his. The initials WW are engraved upon it. There's also some white powder all over the pendant. Let's collect a sample. Matthew, a dead body in a ghost town may not have been what we expected to find in Devil's Ridge, but we shall leave no stone unturned in our quest to find the killer. Nalu says eight canoes were hit and cost about $500 to replace. On Monday, 16 canoes were discovered with the same type of damage. Like today, it took the crew okay. hours to retie. The club is unsure who is behind the vandalism, but point out similarities between what Kane Ohe Canoe Club experienced. And we'll start on top and I'm going to collect some stars, so sit tight, folks. Alright, I got eight stars. I'm gonna take the bolo tie first, because I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the analysis one. 
into the middle 80s. We'll go for 85 for a couple of 83. And we'll have it all down towards the right. I expect the highs in the middle 80s. A couple of light showers in the morning. Afternoon should be looking good. A couple of them at 84 degrees. 72. We'll go left to the right. A couple of trade showers possible into the overnight. East winds 10 to 20. Matt, less than those white granules you've collected from the victim's tie straight to Viola. In the morning, and a quick look at that extended forecast. And we will. Three hours. And let's talk to Walter about the Mer Walter Abernathy. Mr. Abernathy, what can you tell us about Will Wyoming, the man we found hanged from a tree in the center of Devil's Ridge? Oh, Will was a Devil's Ridger, born and bred. He grew up in this here town, but he'd been away for a while, yes siree. Anywho, he came back a couple of days ago and stopped at my post office to pick up some stamps and whatnot. Well, now it seems you're the, like you're the only person left in Devil's Ridge. Do you know where the rest of the inhabitants have gone? I'm as doggone puzzled as you are, yes siree. It was weeks ago now. I'd been out and about delivering mail around Coyote Gorge, and when I got back to Devil's Ridge, the folks had all up and left. But I'm as sure as sure that they'll be coming back real soon. That's why I stayed here, to get their posts all good and proper for where, for when they decide to come on home. I, uh, admire your optimism, Mr. Abernathy. Matthew, since you know Mr. Wyoming visited this post office, we had better take a look around it. They both survived, but for diagnosis, a new reality. Adult onset Stills disease, a rare systemic auto-inflammatory disease. Simple tasks are borderline impossible. Time I'm going to equip the cat again. Her mother helps her out a lot. You know, things like putting her out. I didn't do that. She did it. You know, she helped me to do that. On the toughest of days, Kimberly knows exactly where to turn to find motivation. My son, he's nine years old, so he's a big motivator for me that, you know, I need to be strong and be positive. Staying positive helps her get through each day. All my work was focused on was, how am I going to survive, you know, with this and make the best of my life. I think I see the two clues, at least two clues anyway. I have been able to help other people too that, you know, facing similar autoimmune diseases or any kind of disease that, you know, it's okay. You, know, you just have to own what you have and it's not something to be ashamed of. Well, the ultimate desire might be finding a cure. Kimberly sets a much simpler goal for herself and her son. To be right. able to sit on the floor and play Lego with him. I tell him one day we'll be able to, you know, play Lego. Nicole Carvalho, KTV Island News. Giving back one pint at a time. Seniors at St. Francis High School host a community. Matthew, I wonder what these broken pieces of cardboard once were. Let's put them back together. And I agree, this fancy trunk seems very out of place here. Why don't we have a quick rummage inside? And reveal an area's ever changing landscape. To truly understand right. the city and its people, one must first uncover its past. Tune into Hometown History Sunday, May 21st at 7 30 on OC 16. Say hello to a new monster that you can try away with the 2017 Mazda 3 Sports Sedan for as low as $139 per month. Or how about driving away in the 2017 Mazda 6 Sports Sedan? Got it. Got the nine in time. This is a cover of a book called The Buckaroo's Guide to Surviving in the Wild. You're right. There's a faded inscription on the cover. I can make out the words to Wildcat Will, but that is all. Wildcat Will? Could this be referring to our victim? If so, uncovering the rest of the inscription is of utmost importance. I agree. Okay. This will come in useful one of these days.
The full inscription on the book cover reads, To Wildcat Will, this will come in useful one of these her here darn days. Your pa, Jeb. Your pa? Matthew, this Jeb has to be our victim's father. That's old man Jeb Wyoming's writing there. Yes, siree. Right there. Yes, siree. He's the only other devil's richer who didn't pull up stakes and leave. In that case, we had better find old man Jeb and pass on the sad news of his son's demise. Hey you, what do you think y'all are doing trespassing on my property? Mr. Wyoming, we apologize for the disturbance, but we're sorry to inform you that your son Will has been murdered. My son? Murdered? Ah, I knew that trouble would finally catch up with my wildcat Willie. If he left Devil's Ridge. I'll bet you all them folks who up sticks will come to the same end. Life outside Devil's Ridge just ain't safe. That's what I always told my wildcat Willie. Now if y'all are done snooping around, you'd better get. I ain't got no more time for you. May your neighbors respect you, trouble protect you, the right. angels protect you, and heaven accept you. And let's take a look at the fancy trunk. All I need is five, and then I'll be safe. Looks like a picture in there. A woman's portrait. Matthew, I don't much enjoy rifling through a person's er, intimate belongings, but my curiosity has certainly been piqued by the oil-painted portrait we found in the trunk. Let's see if we can identify this grand lady through our registry. Finished, darling? Now maybe we can talk? Gretchen, I'm sorry. I'm working on something important. Oh, of course. Silly me. I should have phoned for an appointment. If you don't play the neglected wife, you might stop by dressing down to the park. Roland, please. Let's not fight, okay? Why don't we take a trip for our 10th anniversary? All right. Nine. Matthew, our registry matched the portrait you matched the portrait you found in the post office to a woman named Fran Franca Capeschi. Oh my! This Franca is none other than, none other than the wife of Vittorio Capeschi, the Italian mobster. Mrs. Capeschi's records shows she's been living in Italy for the last few years, but it seems she's now back in Concordia. And more specifically, right here in Devil's Ridge. Let's find her. Jesse! Yes, sir. I think we oh, four coins money. already. Cool. No, the council was very cooperative. Okay. Especially after a few martinis. Why she's in Coyote Gorge? Mrs. Capeschi, we believe this trunk belongs to you. Ah, fantastico. I've been looking all over for my precious trunk, Grazy Mill. Mrs. Capeschi, Senior Trooper Matthew and I are investigating a murder. A man called Will Wyoming was hanged earlier. Do you happen to know anything about his death? A murder? Mamma mia, this place is dangerous. I don't know anything about this Senor Wyoming. All I care about is finding my way to my husband's hacienda. He as good as owns these lands, don't you know? But mamma mia, I must say, this place is just disgustoso. Look at me, I'm sweating like a pig. How can I be expected to cook pasta in these conditions? Matthew, did you hear how casually Mrs. Capeschi mentioned her husband's hold over these lands? We'll definitely need to keep an eye out for the Italian mob's activities around these parts, Matthew. Look, Mr. Abbott. Paul, please. Look, I have a friend who's got a great place in the Hamptons. And that's going to do? Let well, these two run their courses. See you when that's done. Okay, folks, we have returned. Let's get the results of the autopsy.
Matthew, I haven't dealt with the hanging for a long time, for a long while. It makes you feel quite nostalgic. Whatever tickles your fancy, Richard. Now, would you mind divulging what you discovered about our victim? Ah, yes. Poor Will Wyoming. First off, the pattern of his injuries confirms that this was no suicide. Wyoming was murdered in cold blood. For instance, the bloody cuts on the victim's hands and bare feet indicate that someone dragged him to the tree from which he was hanged. I also noticed alarming levels of alcohol in Wyoming's blood. Whiplash, to be exact, an extremely rare brand of whiskey. I believe the killer intended to weaken Wyoming with the whiskey, all the easier to drag him. Then Wyoming was hoisted up by a rope from below and left to hang, meaning death by slow, excruciating asphyxi asphyxiation. Mon Dieu, what a terrible way to die, but, but at least it confirms the rope as our murder weapon. It does indeed. What's more, the killer didn't realize that their sadistic methods left us a fine piece of evidence. You see, the only way our perpetrator would have been able to pull a man as large as Wyoming so high is by knotting ropes together to create a pulley. This pulley system would reduce the effort needed to lift Wyoming by half, allowing him to be much more easily raised. Creating such a mechanism using ropes requires a high knowledge of knotting, which makes your killer a dab hand at tying complex knots. Well, our murderer won't even be able to tie their shoelaces when we bind them in handcuffs, Matthew. Okay, let's see here. First coins I've got today. Okay, now let's get the results of the white granules. Matthew, I don't know about you, but I've always been accused of being nitpicky, although I suppose fastidiousness, fastidiousness is an attribute in my line of work. I'm sure it is, dear Viola, but what does being nitpicky have to do with the white particles you extract from the victim's bolo tie? It has everything to do with it. You see, these white granules are nits. The eggs planted on hair follicles by headlights did confirm that our victim's hair was pristine, which means the headlights were left on the bolo tie by his itchy scalped killer. Yeesh! When do we catch our murderer, Matthew? Try not to get too close to their lice-ridden locks. When we do catch our murderer, try not to get too close to... Matthew, I am well and truly stumped by this case so far. We arrive in Del Devil's Ridge, a supposedly bustling trading post, only to find it's completely abandoned apart from a postman, a grumpy old-timer, and his hanged son. While Franca Capeschi, Vittorio's wife, claims simply to be on her way to rejoining her husband, who apparently has a strong hold over Coyote Gorge. If any of these people harbor a motive to kill the victim, I fear we have yet to uncover it. Yet I am... Oh, oh boy. Matthew, what was that noise? Egad, it's a wild horse. Run for your life, Matthew. Holy jeez. We'll find out what's going on in chapter two. Okay, folks, we are back now. Let's start chapter two of Giving Up the Ghost. He's in the geometry class, he's an average student. He's a bit of an outsider. Did you ever talk to him about that? Yes. Matthew, we came to Devil's Ridge expecting a vibrant outpost, and instead we've landed in a veritable ghost town. We found our victim, Will Wyoming, dangling lifeless from a tree. And we've yet no idea among who among the handful of people left in the town might have killed him. Could any of them have had a month? What the devil was that? Mon Dieu, run for your life, Matthew! Oh, 
Oh, thank goodness, the horse missed us, but now it's heading towards some sort of encampment down yonder. Yes, I suppose we ought to try and stop it before it hurts anyone. Um, lead the way to the encampment, Matthew. I'll be right behind you. Close your eyes, my weary beast. Let sweet dreams fill your mind. My, what a fearless chap you are. Who are you, and how did you manage to call such a ferocious brute? Ennis Sparhawk's my name, and I'm a troubadour traveling with this caravan of kindly folk who let me sing for my supper. As for Darwin Bluebell here, I simply soothed her troubled soul by serenading her with my banjo. Well, I must say I am thoroughly impressed. Now, Mr. Sparhawk, Senior Trooper Matthew and I would like to ask you a few questions. Once you've dealt with that horse, of course. Mr. Sparhawk, Senior Trooper Matthew and I are investigating the murder of Will Wyoming, who was found hanged in Devil Ridge's and Devil's Ridge earlier this evening. Will hanged? You sound like you knew the poor chap. Well, I'd seen Will around, sure. He was traveling with us after all. Seemed a decent enough fellow. But that's about all I can say. I don't care much for people. Music is my world, so I just play tunes on my old banjo and tie up the odd wild horse when the need arises. Now if you'll excuse me, I feel a ballad coming on about Will Wyoming's tragic demise. Matthew, so Will Wyoming was traveling with this caravan. In that case, we had better take a good look around their encampment. this time so I'm a little low and I hope to get some cash I can see how dynamite might come in handy to folks traveling through such hostile lands, but an entire barrel of it seems a bit excessive. If your instincts are telling you to have a, have a look inside the barrel, go ahead, but be cautious, I beg you. As for this document, it has our victim's name on it. It's some sort of contractual agreement, saying that Mr. Will Wyoming is hereby hired by Miss... Dash it, the hirer's name is illegible. Think you can decipher those letters, Matthew? Uh, I think I can. Starting with the document. Lucy Liang. Lucy Liang. So this agreement was between the victim and one Lucy Liang. 
Miss Liang must be somewhere around this encampment. Let's see if we can find her. All right. Two. Let's see what Lucy Liang has to say. I heard Will Wyoming's dead? Blast! Miss Liang, can you tell us who you are and why you and this group of people happen to be camping out by Devil's Ridge? Have you heard of El Gordado? It's a town far out in the deserts of Coyote Gorge. They say there are gold nuggets and precious gems just lying on the ground waiting to be picked up. Myself and this caravan of folk are on our way to El Gordado in the hopes of finding our fortune. And what was the contractual agreement between you and Mr. Wyoming? Well, El Gordado ain't the easiest place to find, but Will told me he knew how to get there, so I hired him to show us the way. I see. And what can you tell us about the victim? Do you know of any enemies he might have had in the caravan? Can't say I do. I don't like having men in my hair any more than I like these darned headlights, so I keep my distance from them. Ours is a professional relationship in any case. But I'm certain no one here had any reason to kill Will. He was the only one who could show us the way to El Gordado. I don't know how I'll ever get there now. Get there now. whiskey bottle. Not only did that TNT barrel contain all manner of explosives, but it was also hiding a bottle of whiplash whiskey. Why would anyone hide a mostly empty bottle in such a manner? How clever of you, Matthew. Richard did mention the killer got the victim drunk on this very brand of alcohol. Could this bottle belong to our murderer? Let's send the bottle to Viola and see if she can extract any answers from it. See you guys then. 12 hours. See y'all then. Okay, folks, you've come back. Let's get the results of the whiskey bottle. Dearest Viola, did the, whi did the whiplash whiskey bottle mouth you found in the TNT barrel contain anything to get our sleuthing instincts salivating? It's dro droll that you mention saliva, dear Bon Temps, because I found traces of spit on the neck of the bottle. I ran the sputum through Charlie's DNA machine and the results match Will Wyoming's profile. Which means this bottle once contained the very whiskey the killer used to intoxicate our victim. Charlie's DNA machine never ceases to amaze. It's a wonder we managed to solve anything before he invented it. Indeed, but I'm happy to say that I did make a further discovery using more traditional scientific methods. You see, I also found a sticky green substance on the bottle, which turned out to be cooked sword pear cactus. We didn't find any trace of this culinary delicacy on the victim, which leads me to conclude that your killer enjoyed a steaming plate of cactus before they disposed of the bottle. <coughs> well, that's an extremely useful piece of knowledge to have about our prickly killer. And in order to unearth even more clues, Matthew, what say you we take another look around where Wyoming was hanged?
Seven seconds. Ten. Send one to Ace. Matthew, that envelope's almost filled to bursting with Concordian's with Concordian shillings. How the devil did it end up being discarded here? There's no recipient name, but you're right. We might find some fingerprints on the envelope. I'll get your dusting kit. And look, the name Will's been scrawled on these cowboy boots under a drawing of a wildcat. I have been wondering how Wildcat Will ended up barefoot. These boots must have been his. They're covered in yellow fragments. I agree. Perhaps scooping some of these up will tell us more about our victim's actions before he got killed. Seven. Let's put the strange yellow fragments you got from the victim's boots under the microscope, Matthew. I'm trying to hurry things up because my tablet is low. Kind of looks like macaroni. Find out. Pasta. It turns out those yellow pieces you found on the victim's boots are tiny fragments, are tiny fragments of raw pasta. Wasn't Franca Capeschi harping on about pasta when we spoke to her? Could she have been in contact with the victim despite her claims to the contrary? We must speak to her immediately. Oh, it's you again, Senior Trooper Matthew. Watch your step. I just saw a scorpion scuttling past. Mama Mia, this place... Mrs. Capesh, you told us you didn't know Will Wyoming, but we have proof to the contrary. Oh, Porca Miseria. All right, yes, I did see Wyoming while he was still alive. All I wanted was a little help fixing my carriage's wheel, and he thoroughly disrespected me. That bastardo called me a dirty immigrant on my own land, and then he stomped all over my precious pasta, telling me to go back to my country. I have even had to resort to eating cactus. Can you imagine the horror? If I hadn't been so irritated by my headlights, I would have tied him up and gagged his little mouth shut right there and then. You seem angry enough for the victim to have done much more than just tie him up. Let's hope you don't find out your fury drove you to murder. Oh, she's in the running now. Fingerprints you found on the envelope to Evie for analysis. Okay, 
and I think that's going to do. So I gotta charge this sucker up. 12 hours. I'll see you guys when this is done. For now, this is Matthew. See you then. Okay, folks, we have come back. Let's get the results for the smudge fingerprints now. Howdy, Matthew. Great to see you're above snakes. I trust everything's in, in apple pie order. Come again, Evie. I'm just trying out the cowboy lingo from this buckaroo dictionary I found. Above snakes means alive, and apple pie order signifies in top shape. Isn't it fun? He's like, she'd seen a ghost. Put her in the background, Jack. It's just thrilling, Evie, but I'm afraid we are more concerned about as ascertaining the owner of the fingerprints that were left on the envelope filled with money. Oh yes, I analyzed those prints in the twinkling of a bedpost, and the long and short of it is that they belong to your victim. That's quite a lot of money Wyoming had in his possession. I wonder who had given it to our victim, and whether it even belonged to him at all. Splendid idea, Matthew. Our resident postman will be our best bet at discovering more about the provenance of this envelope. Mr. Abernathy, we found this envelope full of cash, and we were... How is it y'all got your hands on Hank Smith's mail? Hank Smith? We were led to believe this envelope belonged to Mr. Wyoming. Ha! Huh, that's only if y'all think you still... You think things you still belong to you. Do you mean to say our victim was stealing letters? Letters and anything else he could get his grubby paws on? I caught that dunderhead pilfer in all sorts from the good people of Devil's Ridge. How could he do such nasty things when them folks ain't even here to protect themselves? It ain't right. It ain't proper, no siree. I'm telling you, Senior Trooper Matthew, I'm not surprised Will, Will Dunn got himself killed. Serves him right. What do you want from me? I want you to tell me the whole story. I know reliving it is painful. Matthew, our list of suspects may have increased, but we are still unclear on who killed Will Wyoming. We know the victim insulted Franca Capeshi. Did she exact a mobster's revenge by stringing him up? Then we have Walter Abernathy. Does a violent streak lie beneath the postman's sweetly naive exterior? And what about the troubadour and the caravan member Wyoming was traveling with? Do they know more about the victim than they care to admit? What's more, we still haven't got a clue why Devil's Ridge was abandoned by its inhabitants. Matthew, come quick! I've just seen a ghost! What? I'll see you guys for Chapter 3. Alright folks, we've come back. Let's start Chapter 3 of Giving Up the Ghost. Matthew, our list of suspects is getting as long as the rope Will Wyoming was hanged with, but we're still not clear on who actually committed the dastardly deed. I am certain that a few more clues help us get to the bottom of... Matthew, come quick, I've just seen a ghost wandering around the hanging tree in Devil's Ridge. A ghost? Yes, Will Wyoming must have come back from the dead to haunt us. Now calm yourself, Constable. I'm sure there is a perfectly rational explanation for what you saw. Isn't that right, Matthew? Oh, you think we should go investigate Constable Ramirez's claim? Alright then, let's go back to the town. Not even the moon gleaming in the sky can compete with the brilliance of luminescent. I... Matthew, can you see the ghost? It's right over there, moaning away. Matthew, fancy meeting you here. Richard? What on earth are you doing and why are you glowing? Oh, that. Do you remember Aurora Osborne? She was the young lady whose unfortunate incandescence we cured after we caught Kiki, the giant ape. Well, I happened to be experimenting with her blood samples and went a tad too far, but don't I look dazzling? 
indeed that you certainly do, but the next time your experiments go awry, please stay inside the airship. You scare Constable Ramirez half to death. Yes, yes, of course. I just couldn't resist the temptation of lighting my own way in the dark, Matthew. Matthew, now that we stopped Richard from haunting Devil's Ridge, why don't we continue our investigation in the post office? We still have a murderer to catch after all. Drawn map, let's see. Binoculars, coffee tin. It's like a horse. Matthew, I didn't take you for an equinophile, but if you think fixing this broken wooden horse might give us another clue, have at it. <clears throat> Why does this rusty coffee tin have a lock on it? Something important must be inside. Please unlock it as fast as you can. And this hand-drawn map shows directions to a place marked simply with an X. There seems to be some annotations, but I can't make out what they say. You'll need your dusting kit for this job. Matthew, these clues could just could break this case wide open. We'll catch the killer soon, I just know it. There we go. Put some money on my car insurance with Geico. Okay. Matthew, there's a message written on the toy horse you repaired. It says, Get off your high horse, you old coot. It's signed by a WW. Could this have been written by Will Wyoming to his father? Why don't we see if old man Jeb can shed any light on this rather unfriendly message? About a son's angry message. Mr. Wyoming, we found a message we believe your son may have left for. You got some nerve coming back on my land. I'm fed up with you foreign folks with your diseases. Heck, I even caught head lice thanks to you. If you are quite finished with your belligerent talk with Mr. Wyoming, you may remember that we're investigating the murder of your son. Please tell us what the message on this toy horse means. Oh. Y'all found the dang horse. Looky here, I loved my wildcat Willie, but that boy wouldn't stop carrying on about me getting away from Devil's Ridge. I weren't having none of it. He thought I was being all high and mighty, but I wasn't. I was being true to myself. This here is my land, my property, and the only way I'm leaving is in a pine box, I tell you what. Now go on and get before I get there that there postman to tie you up in one of his unbreakable knots. Mr. Wyoming, if we find out your rage led to murder, you'll be the only one tied up in prison.
Man, this mouse is really going to hell. Matthew, whoever wrote the annotation on this map was not happy. No danger. Why? They're all protesting against the path that had been chosen. The bottom of the map is signed Lucy L. Miss Liang must have written these notes. Which means this map must show the route the victim was using to take the caravan to El Gordado. And if that's the case, Miss Leong didn't seem to appreciate the victim's navigational choices. She had better explain herself. Miss Leong, how do you explain the angry annotations you wrote on Will Wyoming's map? I could have sworn I'd gotten rid of that map. If you must know, I had begun to distrust Will. He made us go through all the most dangerous spots. You can't imagine the number of coyotes, snakes, and scorpions we had to deal with on the way. I even had to use special knots to make sure my wagon coverings wouldn't let in any deadly critters. It was stifling. And he promised we could replenish our food stocks in Devil's Ridge. But when we got here, the town was deserted. We've been eating nothing but cactus for days. But Wyoming insisted his way was the only way, no matter that it put all of us in danger. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lot to do, including finding a new safer route so we can finally leave this godforsaken place. Recognize this boy? That's Jasper, Didi Aston's baby. She seemed bonded with Jasper? Completely, she adores him. Is Jasper okay? Yeah, yeah, but we have some questions for Didi. Ever well, let me check, she's not free up by herself. Ever read the fall? There isn't one. Didi adopted Jasper. She's an old girl. Oh, great. The tedious one. There we are. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, this is a phonographic cylinder, but why was it locked up in an old coffee tin? Nicely spotted, Matthew. Someone wrote for Willie on the cylinder. Whatever was recorded on it was intended for the victim's ears. Charlie's phonograph is bound to reveal the cylinder's secrets. Let's get it straight to him. Okay. Choo-choo. Okay, that's two. And I'll see you guys in nine hours when this is done. Okay, folks, we have returned. Let's. I'm going to speed up the photograph. Cylinder. Matthew, the cylinder you found addressed to your victim holds a song recorded by a man and his banjo. Here, let me start with the machine so you can hear it for yourself. The wave in your hair is like the wind in the wheat. Your heart is as wide as Wyoming. Your scent in the air is, is as pure as spring. With you, I would never go roaming. My, this is rather an affectionate song about the victim sung by another gentleman. And Matthew's right. We do know of a certain banjo-playing individual hanging around Devil's Ridge. And a Sparhawk claimed he barely knew the victim, but he had better sing like a canary when we asked him about this rom his romantic ode to Will, Wyoming. That's the last song you wrote. Well, hey there, Senior Trooper Matthew. Mind if I finish up my spiced cactus? I got the recipe from that postman down in Devil's Ridge. Sadly, I also caught a nasty bout of head lice in town. 
But hey, well, I got all the ingredients for a ballad now, don't I? Speaking of music, Mr. Sparhawk, we found a song you composed for Will Wyoming. You failed to mention your inclination for our victim when we last spoke. Oh, you found the cylinder, huh? Well, ain't you something, Senior Trooper Matthew? Yeah, Willie and I were lovers. But he couldn't accept his feelings. He kept breaking up, then coming back to me, then breaking up again. I just couldn't bear the rejection anymore. I wished I knew how to quit the man. I see. Well, let's just hope we don't find out you made Mr. Wyoming this world. Quit this world. Matthew, it appears the victim managed to rile up quite a few people before someone hanged him high. Old man Jeb seemed angrier than ever about his son insisting he leave Devil's Ridge. And what about the victim's spurned lover, Ennis Sparhawk? Heartbreak often leads to violence. At the same time, Lucy Leong was furious about the dangerous route on which the victim had chosen to take the caravan. Matthew, we too need a sense of direction. Let us return to the campsite. It may yet give us the missing clues you need to pin down the killer. According to my sources, for a brief time yesterday, I want to know all I can. But business is business, my son. I'm going to change to the cat. I'm not going to go for the first star this time. I am just going. Oh, bloody shirt. Pig. I didn't see anyone following us. Sack of food. At the mansion, Mrs. Dunbar told me when she arrived. Was there anyone else close by who might have overheard? I wouldn't know. I was in the garage. She phoned me from the house. Mrs. Fletcher, I would rather not say any more. Another 400 X XP coming my way. I understand. This shirt is streaked with blood. We must get a sample immediately. At this time of year. And a rummage in the sack of food could yield another clue. There's still hope of catching the killer, Matthew. That's because the clouds are so low. I'll remember. Unfortunately, I must remind you once again, these negotiations are not open. Mr. Cooper, will not be coerced by your threats, no matter how you choose. What are you implying, Mr. A knotted rope. There was a knotted piece of rope hidden in that sack of food, and it looks identical to the rope used to hoist the victim. Viola will need to take a look at this rope post haste. I agree. Nine hours. And the bloody shirt. If it's more as a set, we're finished right now. Mr. Dunbar, so, since we have another day, we'll be most in trouble. I suggest that for appearance sake, it would be best that we attend it. Let's get the blood sample you collected from the shirts of Viola straight away, Matthew. One. Two thirds of Americans have digestive issues. Another 15 hours. And, and I'll see you guys when these two are done. For now, this is Matthew. See you then. Alright, folks, we have returned. Let's get the results of these two and put a killer behind bars. Matthew, I checked with Dick, and the rope you found in the sack of food is indeed the same as the one used to hang the victim. 
It was rather like looking for a needle in a haystack, but amidst the rope's nuts, I eventually found fibers of a different kind. These yellow fibers are from a type of thin cotton muslin, which lets you breathe in air while keeping out dust and sand, making it the perfect material for bandanas. The most obvious explanation is that the killer wrapped their hands in their yellow bandana to protect themselves from rope burn as they strung up the victim. A clever but ultimately incriminating idea. So the killer was wearing a yellow bandana when they killed the victim, and since we didn't find it, they must still have it on them, Matthew. Matthew, the blood you obtained from the shirt is definitely the victim's. But even more interesting are the particles of sweat I discovered among the blood, which my test shows, which my test show could not have come from Wyoming. How can you be so sure the sweat wasn't his, Viola? For a very simple reason, Charlie's DNA machine showed that the sweat came from a female individual, which your victim clearly wasn't. That is as simple as it gets indeed. Yes, and it also means that the shirt must have been worn by Will's female killer when they murdered him. So a woman killed Will Wyoming. That will narrow down the suspect list nicely, Matthew. We have enough evidence to put Will Wyoming's killer behind bars for good, Matthew. Let's go get her. It was Lucy Leon. Miss hey. Leon, you're under arrest for the murder of Will Wyoming. You think I murdered Will? That's ridiculous. You had a motive. You hated the victim for bringing you to Devil's Ridge, a town which gave you nothing but head lice. Will and I had a few disagreements, sure, but I wouldn't have killed him because of them. Then how did fibers from your yellow bandana end up on the rope used to hang, your, hang the victim? If you think I'm the only person who wears a yellow bandana, oh well. Oh, we've been paying attention. We found the shirt you were wearing when you killed him, still covered with the blood from his bruised hands. Very well, you found me out. I did kill Will Wyoming. If you didn't agree about Will's route to El Gordado, why didn't you just fire him? Why resort to murder? I couldn't fire him. He was the only one who knew how to go on from here. And there was no one left in the town to help us. But when we got to Devil's Ridge, Will demanded double the payment we had agreed upon to take us the rest of the way to El Gordado. Nobody on the caravan could afford such a price. These families have sold everything they had to be able to make this journey, and he was happy to leave us to the coyotes. I wasn't about to let him abuse these people. Will loved whiplash, so getting him drunk was easy. When he passed out, I dragged his body to the nearest tree and hanged him like the rat he was. As despicable as our victim's actions may have been, taking justice into your own hands only means that your caravan is now leaderless. You're under arrest, Miss Le Leon. Miss Leon, you are before this court accused of the murder of Will Wyoming. It was put to me that this Wyoming fellow was hired to lead your caravan across Coyote Gorge? Yes, but he was, at best, incompetent, at worst, greedy. Such a despicable man deserved to die at a, a slow and painful death. It is true that Wyoming didn't seem to have your group's best interests in mind, but that's no reason to hang him. Therefore, your final destination will now be prison, where this court sentenced you to remain for 11 years. How will I ever reach El Gordado now? Well done catching Will Wyoming's killer, Matthew. 
This investigation was no small feat, but you did it. But something is still bothering me, Matthew, and I'm sure it's bothering you too. Devil's Ridge was once a hub of activity, but everyone's disappeared, seemingly overnight. I agree, Matthew. We must find out what, or who, turned it into a ghost town. Taking a look at the other ones. Walter Abernathy, cleared after clue three. Jeb Wyoming, he was cleared from the start. Franca Capeshi, no bandana. Ennis Sparhawk, not a woman. It was Lucy Leon. I'll see you guys for Once Upon a Time in the East 26. Okay, folks, we have returned. Let's start Once Upon a Time in the East 26. Matthew, congratulations on putting another heinous killer behind bars. Will Wyoming's greed cost him his life, but you made sure his murderer didn't go unpunished. Our work here is far from over, however. I made the mistake of mentioning Devil's Ridge had become a ghost town at a luncheon, and now the mayor is demanding an explanation as to how it happened. The mayor's bound to be at Lady Rochester's soiree, and he'll no doubt seek me out, which is why I'm counting on you to investigate, investigate this, Matthew. Of course, Chief. I agree, Matthew. The victim's father, Jeb Wyoming, was there when everyone left. He might have more to tell us. If I may, Bon Temps, I should wager that I'm better equipped to handle a cantankerous old fellow like Jeb Wyoming than you are. I'll take over from here. By all means, Rose, be my guest. Matthew, before you go, there's a rather dreamy troubadour here who wishes to speak with you. Mind if I accompany you? Well, it appears that my talents are no longer needed. Oops, oh well. Actually, I think I'll talk to Sparhawk first. Senior Trooper Matthew, praise the Lord you're here. I'm in a real bind. What with Will gone and Lucy in prison. They were the only ones who knew how to get to El Gordado. There ain't no way the rest of us can continue our journey without them. But there ain't no question of staying put in this creepy town either. That does sound like a rather tricky situation indeed, Mr. Sparhawk. But I must admit, I've never even heard of this so-called El Gordado. What's that, Matthew? You think there could be something useful at the post office? Then let us check there. Don't fret, Mr. Sparhawk. We'll be back before you know it. Last chance. There's a girl. Who she with? Okay. That is me and the man's dead. They had their engagement party last Friday. I don't know. Engagement. Okay, we're ready for it. Do you think that locked chest might contain something to help send Mr. Sparhawk and the caravan on their way, Matthew? Then let us unlock it. Oh. 
we go. Seven eight eight seven eight. One eight seven eight one. Four seven four one eight. There we are. You found an atlas in the chest, Matthew. How fortuitous! But we certainly do not have time to peruse to peruse this gargantuan book of maps for the route to El Gordado. Let us send it to Evie. Nine hours. Now looky here, Senior Trooper Matthew. What did I already tell you all about trespassing on my property? We don't have time for your crotchety antics, old man. We need you to tell us everything you know about why everyone left Devil's Ridge, and we need it before the cows come home. Well now, this year Philly's got got bags more spirit than than that pompous fella you had with you earlier, Senior Trooper Matthew. Alright, if it means you'll get off my land, I suppose I might as well talk. All I know is that a gang of nasty folks came and made some ruckus on the main street. And a few hours later, everybody had done, gone, and left. Ruckus on the street, huh? Your help is much appreciated, Mr. Wyoming. Matthew, I do believe a look around the main street is in order. Looks like a notice of some description. If you believe it contains information linked to the disappearing act the Devil's Ridgers pulled, then let us recover the smudged writing immediately. Finally. Cripes, Matthew. This poster reads, To all inhabitants of Devil's Ridge, you have 24 hours to leave the town or you will pay with your lives. This is quite clearly an eviction notice, and it's addressed to the entire town. Just who would be capable of striking such fear into the locals' hearts, Matthew? Perhaps taking a sample of that stain on the poster will reveal more. Send that sample you collected from the eviction notice to Viola at once. I don't think this is going to be six hours, will it? Yes, it will. And I'll see you guys when these two are done.
All right, folks, we have returned. Let's get the results of the Atlas. Hello there, Matthew. I must say, this Atlas contains the most detailed map of Coyote Gorge I've ever set my eyes on. Does that mean you can help send Mr. Sparhawk and the caravan on their way to El Gordado? Well, yes and no, Matthew. You see, the Atlas does include a map of El Gordado, but it is so complex, I cannot make head or tail of it. It can only be really, it can only really be deciphered by someone who's truly skilled in the art of navigation. Hmm, I somehow doubt our musically minded troubadour is a whiz with a map, Matthew. But good thinking, perhaps the postman might be able to help us out. Let us speak with him. Oh, Senior Trooper Matthew, I'm all in a tiz. Have you heard? They're closing down my post office. All that time I spent getting the folks' mail all good and proper, but the officials say ain't nobody coming back. I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Abernathy. However, Senior Trooper Matthew and, my, and I may have a rather enticing proposition for you now that you find yourself out of work. You see, the group passing through Devil's Ridge are in desperate need of a map-reading expert to get them to El Gordado. We found the map. We just need to know if you fancy yourself up to the job, Mr. Abernathy. Oh, yes, m ain't, ain't nothing Walt Abernathy needed, needs like a new adventure to get over the loss of his beloved post office. But there's uh, just one small problem. I've doggone lost my compass somewhere on the main street. I can't be going nowhere without that, no ma'am. Lucky for you, Senior Trooper Matthew just happens to be an expert at finding lost items, Mr. Abernathy. We shall take a look around the main street at once. Oh, ain't you just the bee's knees? I'd be delighted to share my dinner of cactus and beans to thank you for your kind help, Senior Trooper Matthew. In the forms of a burger. Cool. Broken compass. Dash my wig, do you really think these broken metal pieces might be Mr. Abernathy's compass, Matthew? We better get to fixing them right away. Got the nine just in time. Your instincts have proven correct once again, Matthew. This must be the, this must be the compass the postman had misplaced. Now all I need to do is bring Mr. Abernathy to Mr. Sparhawk and send them on their merry way to El Gordado. Pretty sure that the next case is going to be open on this coming Thursday, but uh, I can actually start it a day early. Because I live in Hawaii. 
Mr. Sparhawk, we're pleased to tell you that Mr. Abernathy has agreed to lead you and your group to El Gordado. Oh, now that is just the best news. I'm so pleased I could just burst into song. In fact, I'll be sure to write a ballad about you all while I'm on my travel, Senior Trooper Matthew. Mr. Abernathy, I'm so pleased we'll be spending more time together, and I apologize for the haste, but we really must be on our way. We're already behind schedule as it is. Yippee! I've got the map and my compass, and I'm all ready to go. Yes, sirree. Well, take care, sirs, and safe travels on your trip to El Gordado. Thank you kindly, ma'am, and please take these coins I earned from Bass from Buskin as a sign of my appreciation for all your help, Senior Trooper Matthew. And let's talk to Viola. Viola, what can you tell us about that substance Matthew collected from the eviction notice? Well, the fruits of my labor show that the sample gave off hints of cherry plum and raspberry. But the main ingredient was a whole lot of grapes. Someone was eating a fruit salad? Not quite, my dear Rose. This particular bouquet is typically found in very expensive Ch Chianti wine, which hails from the region of Tuscany in Italy. Wine, eh? It's a good thing Maddie isn't here. She'd be trying to lick that sample right off the side if she heard it contained alcohol. Uh, yes, she probably would. But, most, but more importantly, all this leads me to conclude that whoever put up that notice is Italian, and a very wealthy one at that. A wealthy Italian, eh? This has Vittorio Capesci's name all over it, Matthew. But as he's not here to question, we'll have to make do with his wife. Let's see if Franca Capesci can be persuaded to divulge any information. About the threatening eviction notice. Paramour del Ciolo, not the flying squad again. Can't a woman make her way to her husband in peace? Funny enough, we're here to speak to you about your about Mr. Capesci. We already know your mobster husband forcibly evicted the, evicted the inhabitants of Devil's Ridge from their homes. Now we want you to tell us why. Eh? Mamma mia, who are you calling a mobster? My husband is a bona fide businessman, Senior Trooper Matthew. I know nothing of his dealings, but I am sure that if he asked everybody to leave Devil's Ridge, he had a good reason. And what of the fact he threatened those who did not comply with death, Miss C Mrs. Capesci? My husband is not a violent man, Senior Trooper Matthew. It was just his way of motivating people, Capiche. Now I really shall waste away if I don't have a bowl of pasta soon. Here, if I give you this, will you finally let me make my way to Vittorio's Hacienda in peace? Matthew, I hear you successfully sent Mr. Sparhawk and the caravan on their way to El Gordado, accompanied by Mr. Abernathy. It does always warm the cockles of one's heart to help someone in need, does it not? As does a soothing glass of absinthe, but as I hardly have any left in my ever-dwindling stash, I suppose I had better abstain tonight. I shall pretend I did not hear talk of any such stash, Madeline. In any case, we have more important matters at hand. Everything leads us to believe that the Italian gang was responsible for evicting the entire population of Devil's Ridge. But we still have no idea why they booted the inhabitants out. And who knows, Devil's Ridge may not be the only Coyote Gorge settlement they've turned into a ghost town. Worry not, Chief. We shan't stop until we find out exactly what the Italians are up to. Do I plan to do any cases in Mysteries of the Past? Absolutely. Which ones will I do? Well, that's for me to know and you to find out. May 23rd? Hey, that's tomorrow, actually. Since it's already Monday, so it'll be released on a Tuesday then. That's cool. 
All right, I'll see you guys then. But first of all, I got some sticker packs to open. Four new ones. No new ones. Three. A fresh five. One sticker from this current case. I'll see you guys on the 23rd, which is a Tuesday. See y'all then.